Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin. Welcome back to another episode of Exante. Today we're going to discuss the case of CompuServe versus Cyber Promotions. This case was heard in the Southern District Court of Ohio in the year 1997. So the plaintiff in this case was CompuServe and they were an email processor. Back then people didn't have access to free email like we do now, Gmail, Yahoo. People actually paid to have access to email. Uh, CompuServe was a service that provided email uh, to all these individuals that wanted to have it. Cyber Promotions was the early version of a mass junk email sender, mass advertising emails. So they would send thousands of emails to CompuServe addresses um, and they had contracted with their own clients to have the advertisements uh, be sent to CompuServe addresses. CompuServe clients, the customers that were paying to have access to email, were not pleased with all the spam emails that they were receiving and they told CompuServe that, hey, if you guys don't figure out this issue, I'm gonna have to go find another email processor. Um, in addition, CompuServe servers got so overloaded by the thousands of emails that were being sent to them that um, the whole processes of, uh, of the emails were getting slowed down. So like their servers were just so jam packed with all this junk email that they couldn't function properly. Um, ultimately, CompuServe brought suit uh, with the cause of action being a trespass to chapel, uh, which is more generally just a trespass to, to property. Um, this. Uh, was in the scheme of a larger suit against cyber promotions by CompuServe. But in this specific decision, what we're reading is the decision of the court to grant an injunction in favor of CompuServe so that cyber promotions could no longer send their customers emails. Uh, so the issue in this case is whether you know, junk mail being sent by cyber promotions actually constitutes a trespass to chattel. So the court ruled in favor of CompuServe saying that um, Cyber promotions, you know, mass email sending to CompuServe did constitute a trespass to Shadow. They said that, um, you know, just because it's an electronic message doesn't mean that it's not tangible property. The tangible property in this case they considered was the server. That was uh, what they meant for the tangible property is because the server was getting slowed down so much um, and all the emails had to pass through the server, um, it was indeed a trespass to Shadow. Um, and it was certainly intentional. It was intentional, that's a requirement for trespass to chattel, and it was intentional uh, because it was shown in the evidence that cyber promotions had you know, changed their process to send emails to CompuServe because CompuServe had implemented some filters to try and filter out emails from cyber promotions. And cyber promotions figured out ways to get around those filters so they could get the emails to CompuServe uh, regardless of the filters. So it was certainly an intentional act. And then they ruled that because the emails had a direct impact to the server, that it was a physical trespass to, to chattel. Um, so the injunction was granted in favor of CompuServe and cyber promotions could no longer send emails to the customers uh, that were using the CompuServe server for their email address. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some of the ex ante implications of the case. Um, first one would be that it stops junk mail. And I think that we all think that that's a good thing because junk mail is just annoying and it weighs down our ability to get to important emails and it does slow down uh, society as it functions through email. So that's a, a positive um, <clears throat> implication of the precedent set in this case. Another implication that might not be so positive is advertisement does have the ability to increase economic well-being because you know people know about products, services that they would have never known about before. Um, when an email server doesn't allow any of that advertisement in, these individuals might not know about these products, might not spend money on these products, might not you know stimulate the overall economy. Just to play devil's advocate a little bit there. Um, uh, another you know scenario that this trespass to chattel could be applied to. Um, and let's just think about something that's a hot topic now as I'm filming this video is uh, TikTok. President Trump doesn't like TikTok because it's, he says that it gives the Chinese government access to all types of our data. Um, it trespasses on our, our personal information and collects that and sends it to the Chinese government. Um, you know, if TikTok didn't put like a user agreement at the beginning of, of you know, when someone downloads and begins to use their app, and they still collected all of this data, could that be a trespass to chattel? Uh, possibly, and I think likely so. It would likely lead to a cause of action for the you know, individual consumer against TikTok or maybe the United States of America versus China if there was a venue where that suit could be brought. Um, especially when you think about how many kids are using TikTok and how they don't have really the ability to understand or read a user agreement before they begin to use that app. Um, <clears throat> different courts have treated this 
trespass the chattel differently when it comes to the internet. You know, it's just a new thing to gripe with, a new uh, perspective to view the cause of action from. And as such, some courts have required that there be actual damage to the server. Um, this is uh, relevant in the case Intel Corp for Samidi. In this case, Hamidi was uh, sending email messages back to Intel Corporation after he had left the corporation, telling all the employees about what a terrible corporation it is. Corporation ultimately ruled in favor of Hamidi in that case, even though he was, you know, kind of in the role of cyber promotions um, in that specific case. Uh, and they said that they ruled in favor of Hamidi because his emails didn't cause any damages to the servers of Intel. So some courts have construed this trespass cause of action to mean that there needs to actually be damages to that server. Um, I'm not sure that's a positive uh, thing, and I think that the court here in CompuServe versus Cyber Promotions didn't really say that there needed to be these damages. Um, they were just dealing with the injunction. Um, physical damages probably aren't as relevant in the world of the internet as are, you know, uh, psychological damages for the consumer or, you know, damages for the company in that not as many consumers will want to use their product because of, you know, the multiple ads on it. So. Physical damage is probably not as likely to occur in this type of an application of the trespass to chattel as it takes place in the internet. So there's some incentives uh, along with, uh, you know, another hypothetical, the TikTok scenario that we could potentially use this case and apply it towards. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye.